Good evening. Welcome to the March 6th Board of Selectmen's meeting. This meeting is being recorded for cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. Okay, so we just came out of executive session. Now we're in open session. I'm sorry, did you hear from um, Chris Morano at all today? Do you know when she's coming in? She told me she was coming in today. Is, did she indicate that to you? She wasn't coming in. She gave me the letters. She gave you the letters. Okay, that's fine. I have her down as coming in. So we'll... That's first on the yes. agenda. Do you want to speak to that or pass the letters over or what it is you want to do? We have it narrowed down. To two people, um, to one person, but they, um, this their second choice. They want to bring her on and try to keep her because she has qualifications. Uh, but they did pick someone, and they picked um, Miss Joy from Halifax, and she wrote a letter. She said she would send a letter from, um, regarding the other person on the status of the position she was recommending her for. Okay, do you want me to read this aloud for yeah, you too? Yeah, please. Okay, this is from the Plimpton Council on Aging. Dear Board of Selectmen, after screening over a dozen candidates and narrowing the search to three finalists for the position of Council on Aging Director, the COA Board has interviewed and reached a final decision on who they would like to recommend to you for the position vacated by the resignation resignation of Christine Morano. Attached will find the resume of their choice for you to review. The board feels this person will be the best fit for the position to work with them at the monthly board meetings and to carry out the goals of the Plimpton COA would like to see implemented in the future. Current director Chris Morano has already submitted the annual report on the COA to Bridget, Bridget sorry, Martins for publication in the town report. She will meet with the Finance Committee on March 13th to review the proposed COA budget for 2018 and address any questions they may have. So the initial responsibilities of the new director will be to create the monthly newsletter, get it printed and mailed, and to conduct the monthly business meetings. The biggest obstacle for her will be the state grant application, which is submitted every August for 2018. There are grants submitted in the past years on file to refer to when completing the documents. Chris will be available to answer any questions you may have. It is the hope of the board and director that you will agree with their choice since much of the time and decision has gone into this process. Thank you. Um, the name of the person is Joy Marble. She lives in Halifax. She graduated from um, Silver Lake. Uh, you probably know Joy, don't you? Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> has an associate's degree from Massasoit Community College and a bachelor's degree from Bridgewater State College. Um, has experience as a paralegal, a legal secretary, and an administrative uh, supervisor in IS department, and a human resource supervisor. Um, she owns property in Plimpton. She's been the chair of the Halifax COA for 10 years. President for Generations, which is a nonprofit fundraiser for COA. Um, right of home, right at home caregiver in the Rockland for over 10 years. Um, that sounds pretty good to me. Sounds very good. Yeah. So, motion to accept the Council on Aging's recommendation for the hiring of this person. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And they're going to, the second person is that as a paid position, and they're going to sort that out somehow with FinCom or? That's going to be covered by grant money. Okay. Uh, that position, and, and, and I guess it's a nice juxtaposition okay. because the, that person is a, the 
kind of the perfect personality as an outreach person to the you know the different uh, great nice different piece from the council on aging so she thought that was a good opportunity and it's a, it's a grant they apply for every year it's still there um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't appear like it's going away anytime soon so they'll be able to cover it maybe in the future we may have to but it's not just a one-time grant it's a grant that comes in every year mm -hmm. so is the, that voted at this meeting they had the council on aging was it voted that they were going to have this second person? I believe so, yeah. Council on Aging voted. Do you know who it is? We don't have that name, do okay. we? No, she gave it to me and I don't have she it. She was the second runner up on it and she said that she was going to submit a letter to Western State. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. okay. good. Rest, so. All right. But she was the second runner up too. Perfect, thank you. All right, so we have the um, 2016 town reports. So departments. Committees need to submit their annual report. Mm -hmm. Dale <coughs> traditionally does it for us. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like that was smooth. <laughs> everybody okay, can submit their report no later than the 13th of April. All right, so just please. repeat it. Please submit your report to Bree by April 13th. 13th. And that gives you plenty of time. Do you need to bump it back and give them all a week to be late? It's going to be in production. Go to the printer on April 13th. Yes. You want these electronically? So you, want it in, you want it before then, then? We can say the 13th. Just it's we have a system that we came up with last okay. year that Tara and I did, and it worked very well. Okay. And so part of the index and the introduction, it's that's done already. So if we can submit their pages, the reports so far that I've gotten have been good. They're great. So we'll put them in order. So we just the thirteenth would be great, please. And you're going to send out a follow up email to remind everyone. My third reminder will go out tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Wow. Okay. Good. And how Did about the cover that? and anything else that we need to? Oh, working on we're working on the cover. So I just from around town. Terrific. Good. That takes care of. Yes. And we'll report then. In terms of the BLS report, if there, because I don't, I'm not sure I may see it differently, but any highlights that. Any of you think it should be included in there? Just, just okay. send me a quick email, and I'll, you know, I'll. How about low sure. lights? <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> We're good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I put on preliminary re review of the 2017 warrant articles, but I'm not sure that's. I didn't really mean a review, but just to make sure that we have um, all the things that we've talked about. We have all of the ones that have been brought to my attention so far. Um, there's some just some minor changes. We're going to change the law, or, um, change the bylaw to create the revolving accounts under the new Mass General Law. Um, and um, I have a uh, special article for the police department. Um, and um, so far, that's the only really the only ones I have. Uh, so. Halifax is going to be doing a non-binding um, warrant on the, yeah. I don't really see the need for that. I don't know how you feel. But on, the, on the Silver Lake Silver land, Lake land. land. Did you get my email today? That the, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance to read it. The Kingston board had voted right. not to buy the land. Right, and yes, to, at this time. At, at this, this time, time, and to pursue others and that might be included in the later one but they um, at the last minute they've decided it's it won't not going to appear on their warrant so right i think the um the email the other email that we got which may have been included in that chain um thought that it might be a good idea for us to still do this the, the non-binding warrant um, just so that if it does come up again next september next whenever um, our representation on the Silver Lake School Committee will know what the voters feel about this. Mm -hmm. The issue I see is two. One, um, that, you know, as somebody said, I forget who responded to one of the emails saying basically if it comes up again, it may be a completely different land purchase with different parameters. And so you, you're putting something on that may never appear. Mm -hmm. But two, if in fact they vote for it, to sell it. You know, I'm not sure that's where. There's, there's 
we're, n we're not advocating one way or the other, but given that w another piece of land comes along, we probably would be. Right now, we're advocating that we have the vote. Mm -hmm. We've never talked about which way, but depending. Well, I think that's the point, is that, that this happened without um, the residents of the town having a voice, except for our representation right. on the board. And maybe they, maybe they need more direction on how the residents would like them to vote. If, even if they were to find another parcel in the Silver Lake land, it still would be selling Silver Lake land. Probably. And yeah. if it's not a parcel of Silver Lake land, then we're it. Yeah. totally matter. out of it. So, I mean, the question is, do the residents support se selling Silver Lake um, district land really to any of the towns? Well, that just would be Kingston. On the vote of just a school committee. Yeah, on the vote of just a school committee. Well, that's already the, that's the legislation, so they have right. that right. Right, they have that this right. This would be just to give our reps right. Whether a, a feeling <coughs> that the residents want. Right, if they want to support selling the land. Yeah. I personally don't see that it hurts to do it. I, I don't know that it helps. No, it I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead with it, fine. Mm -hmm. Why don't you um, see about writing something up and then we'll talk about it when we get. All right, well, you said there. Halifax is doing it. Halifax is, has it on their special town meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night. Yeah. Right. So um, what I'll do is I'll find out the language they use. It should we should kind of mirror image whatever yeah. they whatever they use. So I will check with the Charlie and find mm -hmm. out how it went and what the vote was. Okay. So we do have um, the town clerk who has something that's not on the agenda, but which came up this afternoon, and we're fitting it in under the any other business that legally comes uh, and the reason it's it's time sensitive so um, I received a resignation letter um, from Marilyn Brown on the Finance Committee um, so that's the letter and I've updated thank you what now would be if you sign some of my paperwork um, a third Finance Committee position open for election Okay. Um, there's a mass general law that dictates that I need to have your letter to me saying that there's a vacancy that has to be filled 15 days before April 4th, which would be March 20th. <coughs> I've done the letter, so if you can okay. um, uh, accept the resignation letter, um, and you can see there's three positions now. There'll be two finance committee positions for three years and one position for two years. Um, this is a letter that cites Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 10, which is procedure to fill a vacancy and notice. And the last page uh, is a page for your signatures notifying me, and it would satisfy the, the state statute mm -hmm. in order for me to get it on the ballot this year. And I was just going to send um, an update to the town and on our website to let them know that the deadline is April 4th to submit nomination papers, so we're not even a month away. Okay. So I would like to add that in for my update tomorrow. Okay, so motion to sign this letter for Tara to do what she legally needs to do. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now I'll make a motion to accept the, with regret, the um, resignation of Marilyn Brown from our finance committee. Oh, and you can just sign this is the updated version. You had signed one for me with the position, but that includes the two-year position. It Someone just goes in my file. Someone second to your vote. Uh, second. We did. Yeah. Oh, we did. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? She will be missed. She will be. Hopefully we can... Still continue you want everyone to use their brain. Oh, and I Absolutely. suggested actually, um, it's 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 allowed to do it tell. as a date certain in advance or for in a, a, a date certain. So I I we suggested okay. that she put in her resignation now so that I can get it on the ballot. But I suggested that it be May nineteenth, which is 
if our town meeting goes for two nights, it goes to the next day after the second night so that she can do whatever she has to do for the town meeting because she did say that she would help okay. uh, through this town meeting, but it's before the election date. Perfect. So that's why the date is okay. May 19th. And I was actually going to do this at the end of the meeting, but since we're sort of on the subject, I just wanted to let people know that I will not be seeking re-election re for the Board of Selectmen this year. So, thank and, you. Uh, we have that. And you have that, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. Tara, can you pull papers already for the nomination papers? Yes, oh yes. Everything okay. Out. Yep. Yep, we don't, have, um, we don't have it in our bylaws when they're available. Um, but they're available. Uh, we just have to do it pretty consistently, have them available. They've been available for a couple weeks. Okay. And I did post it. It's on our town website, but I will do it again tomorrow, including this position with an update and the timing. Excellent. So all the positions are listed on the website that yep. um, people could take I'll out. I'll uh, update it. It doesn't include Marilyn's position, okay. but I'll do that again. Terrific. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so no, she doesn't know. It's just you're you're, term, you're all set on the warrants that you need to. So far, write uh, yeah, I'm just, just starting to write the warrants now. I mean, uh, all the standard articles will be there, and then uh, and then the few new ones. I'll forward you the new ones to. Uh, You'll send a draft around. Yeah, yeah, I'll send a draft around. The only thing I ask is that, in, in, as in years past, when the draft goes around, try not to let it get out because everybody thinks it's the absolute be all and end all. Right. And all right. of a sudden, the murmuring starts, and we haven't even gotten to a you know to a mm -hmm. certified uh, warrant yet. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. So the decommissioning surety for Avita Bank. You said usually usually we have a bond. This one is an escrow. Usually okay. our yeah, usually we do a bond under the special permit for these things in case for some reason they abandon it and, and the town mm -hmm. ends up taking it and has to decommission it. Um, the um, the builders on the Lake Street project didn't want to do it that way for whatever reason. They wanted to do it as an escrow rather than a bond. I mean, in other words, a bond, they just sign the bond and it goes away and we know the bond is there when we need it. Mm -hmm. This is different in that it's escrow. They're actually depositing the money. Avidia holds the money for whatever period of time, the 20-year lease. And um, the agreement went back and forth between their council and our council a couple of times till everybody got what they wanted uh, on it. And, um, and our council recommended this is a good signature copy. So. Um, okay, and where is that copy? So we're out with that. I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't. Is it? Yeah, it's right here. Isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So what's the amount? Twenty. Do you know the amount of? Is it twenty? Twenty thousand? I think twenty, twenty-five thousand. Yeah, twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-four thousand. Sixty-eight dollars and zero cents. Okay. So motion to sign this um, as recommended by our town coordinator and our town council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That nope. has become language in there about this decommissioning things if it was abandoned, but it's by way of thinking the, s the scrap alone, if we were to, you know, if we were to take the property for lack of taxes, and it would be worth, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of money. So, um, I'm not sure it's really necessary in the long run, but this, the special permit calls for it. And again, this was those were all components that were written in when solar was just getting going, you know. And, and it's just my signature on these, yeah. Seems. Yes. No, is this with Borrego? Is that? This, no, the this is, here? Um, what's the name of it? Who's building the Lake Street one? Blue Wave. Blue oh, Wave. It was Blue Wave. Well, it was Blue Wave, but they've assigned it to somebody yeah. since then. But, okay. Yeah. So where does this go? This, does Avidia. It go to the, well, does the it bank. go? Avidia do we Bank keep actually copy? holds the escrow amount okay. and, and, and they hold on to the money. We have it, and then we would just have to present to them evidence that, in fact, um, you know, the owners of the property are in default, we've taken it for taxes, and we're exercising our rights under the escrow agreement to take that amount of money back to decommission the site. So does um, the tax collector, treasurer, get a copy treasurer, of this as well? She's, she's the the treasurer, she'll get a copy okay. of it. The accountant will have a sure, copy. Okay. And, uh, 
Okay, so next on the agenda is a fire EMS update. Do you want to do that, John? Uh, sure. We talked a little about this in the executive session, but uh, we presented a budget. The fire chief presented a budget to the uh, finance committee. I think the thing that stands out is that since we've gone to advanced life systems or services, uh, and we are starting to do part of Carver, and maybe potentially we've done one with Kingston, the revenue side of the uh, EMS operation is increasing quite dramatically. And it looks like we're, last year, I think we had 183,000 in revenue. This year, it looks like it'll be close to 250. We continue to uh, go forward in pulling the numbers together to test different options, working with other towns, going to a private system. That that will not happen by this town meeting, but we will have everything certainly by the time a year from now. And so far, it looks good. Uh, I think we're bringing the cost down. Good, thank you. Back to brief. Uh, ambulance abatement, I might as well do that too. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara, town accountant, uh, told me that I should get on the ambulance abatement committee, ordered me to get on the ambulance, <laughs> so that we could uh, address old res uh, receivables that need to be written off if, mm -hmm. or at least understand w where they are in terms of collection. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was a committee that I had to be appointed. That's why I sent out a note. Yes. Tara has said that's not a committee that you need to be appointed. So I'm just going to work with Warren and uh, Barbara. Perfect. Good. Thank you. In my experience, the board gets to vote on that usually once a year to clear the books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't been done for a couple of years, so we need to do it. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. I had <coughs> the land purchase on here um, as a tentative topic. I'm hoping that something would happen by now, but it has not. The mm -hmm. P&S is still with the um, seller's attorney. and They were nudged last week, but that's it. Don't you love lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> Just love nudging. Uh, John, the technology grant application update. Um, Anything from last, other than last week? Yeah, we were looking for the password. I sent a note off, copy copy to Zach Blake, and uh, he's given us a password. Perfect. So now I can get into the application. And with your help, mm -hmm. we'll start writing sure. the grant. And I think you can only do this. It's one-shot deal, isn't it? You can't go back. Right. So you need but to have We need to at least run off the application yes. so we understand. Right, right. what, what they're right. asking. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Public safety building update. Um, basically, we're looking pretty good. I think I told you last time that <coughs> we had a a rough final draft. We have a more final file. Nothing is actually ever final until you start building, I guess. But um, we're about as final as we can get at this point. We're going to get a finished drawing. We're in the process of preparing literature for mailing to the residents. We're going to, um, the committee wants to come on the 20th to present to the board of selectmen. Um, there's going to be public meetings. There'll be, you know, one at the library, probably another one here. So we seem to be pretty much on track for that. Because it was, it was discussed whether or not we needed a an actual rendering drawing instead of, you know, something that you just pulled off the internet, and it would cost an additional five hundred dollars to uh, Dunham and Sweeney and the committee. It we're still below budget. So that's mm -hmm. uh, the 125000 that the uh, town meeting approved last mm -hmm. year. So the committee voted for us to do that and Good. then we'll need Board of Selectmen's Good. signature on this, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so basically that's where we are. We have a meeting this Wednesday at 6 o'clock um, just to work on tightening up the language for the literature. Um, I don't know if we're going to have the rendering. There's a possibility that we mm -hmm. will. And certainly we'll have it by the um, presentation to the Board of Selectmen on the 20th. 
great. I look forward to it. Yeah. Okay. I think you've made good progress. Oh, oh thank you. Finally. Great, yes. It's, it's been a long process, and I think we needed to go through every step to get to where we are. Mm -hmm. but, but we're there now. Is your next meeting at 7? I'm assuming it's 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock Wednesday, yes. Okay. Um, the Orthos Flyover Project. Um, I spoke with... Um, Mr. Ted Koval, um, WSP last week, and indicated that Clinton would be interested in getting in on this, if it's at all possible. And he said it may be possible. There is some jockeying of the six original towns that were put in here, so, mm -hmm. but that's not for us. So he's going to get back. He, he said he would contact some people, get back to us, because they don't know exactly. Didn't they how need they an answer this up. week? Didn't they need us to say yes or no by this week? <coughs> Well, no, because there's some, again, there's some question about whether the other six towns are, are participating or how they're participating. So they didn't even, so some of them aren't even signed on so yet. So if they don't sign on, does our price go up or does well, our price go down? Well, that was or? my question to him. I said, how much? I, I said, we need, you know, we need a number. And I don't have that number yet. He said he's working on it. He was supposed to get it back to me. I haven't seen it yet. So, Christine, are you familiar with this? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I saw the emails. Uh, yeah. In so, a, in addition, uh, they did speak with the chief and um, police chief, um, Pat Dillon, and he said this would be very valuable for his department as well uh, for, you know, just for... Okay, I, I kind of got a little bit of a different take from him, that this would be valuable, but the little he uses it, he's pretty happy with Google Earth, too. Mm -hmm. um, Bob Carling indicated that he's also happy with Google Earth. We have this already, but it's 10 years old, and he can't access it on his computer. So, yeah, well, it's we don't have this. We Bob. have Bob. we have pycnometry, which is a, which is a older technology. Okay, so if if we do vote to go ahead with this, then we want to make sure that the people who are supposedly going to use it mm -hmm. actually can use it. I think Deb Stewart said that this might make us eligible for more grants. Do you have any idea what that? It, it, it could very well do that. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's basically it's a foundation, photo foundation overlay of our assessor's maps, which then might make us eligible for some things that have to do with GIS and, and so on and so forth. I don't know if you've ever seen a GIS mapping system, but this is a sort of a stopgap. GIS places all of the buildings and, and, and outbuildings and everything on a parcel on the picture mm -hmm. in the boundary line. So it's much, much, much more accurate for, you know, for um, zoning things, which I think that's probably Bob hasn't really used it like that yet. No, he hasn't. He, he indicated to me that he's really comfortable with Google Earth because it let them look at previous years and well that's true but, but Google Earth is generally um, is generally the aerials are generally short shot when everything is leafed out this is done when this nothing is, is leafed out so that you get a much better picture of what's on the ground and um, and that tends to make all the difference in the world because a lot of times on Google Earth you can't actually even see some of the buildings or the yes, building you know. exactly I yeah, know my house is like that yes. mm -hmm. So, do you need a vote on this tonight? Or uh, no, I, we don't have a figure, so it's right, kind of hard to vote. Right, we don't have a figure. On. So, I mean, when when he lets me know, I'll just forward you the email that I get whatever I get from him to the board. Then you can put it on the agenda for the meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, or nay it at that point. Great, thank you. Well, can you just when you talk to him make sure that on um, the flip side that it's we're not going to be locked into spending more money on this type of stuff. Because we've we've done this, because you know it'd be nice if there's grant money available, but then there's also you know what if we're required to maintain it or update it or what, do whatever. I just would want to make sure that there's no, you yeah, know, ongoing, costs, ongoing, ongoing costs, costs associated yeah. with it. Good right. <clears throat> the initial thing is just basically a snapshot in time, and it sits like mm -hmm. that. I, I, if you wanted to do anything else, you could I, theoretically you could do another whole flyover, or you could just fly over certain areas. And I would imagine in the future, the way things are working, this will, um, the assessor's department will have a drone in the air constantly just checking these things out for us on a regular basis. Because that's just the, the way the world are the is working. The assessors the That is just the way the world is working. You want to put a drone on that IT grant? <laughs> yeah. Now, if, if, just as an aside, read uh, Tom, Thomas. Um, 
I want to say for Dan, but it's not. Um, his book. He's a he's a Freeman. 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 Yeah. New York Times columnist. Flat. Yeah, he wrote The Earth Is Flat, but he just wrote he just wrote another book, uh, which is new. It just came out last year, 2016. And um, it's absolutely fascinating on what's happening in terms of technology, in terms of all of the technologies. Yeah. He calls it the age of acceleration, and everything is accelerating far faster than anybody. I mean, even if you look around in the last 10 years, um, you know, everything's accelerating faster than anybody anticipated it. So, yeah. and, you know, nanotechnology and, and, and the discussion of Moore's Law, you know, that the Processing power increases every 18 months, which they've stretched out to now two years. But that's also happening in terms of nanotechnology, robotics, and they're all sort of coming together. You know, they're coalescing, and um, the changes are just going to be Astounding. don't blink. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. All right, thank you then. Okay, weekly report. I actually did not get in to sign any warrants yet. Bree prepared me a list if I can find it here. Do it All right, week. we'll just do it next week. Hmm? Have your spiral binder. I don't have my spiral notebook. Yes, thank you. All right, so we have $9,807 to KP Law, which I will review and make sure it's going to the right departments, but that's probably... It's 20 The auditors for four thousand, insurance for two twenty, Whitman Communications for nine ninety five. That was the new uh, security. security system. Oh, good. <coughs> Clifton Express renewal, um, which I guess we have to choose. What do we do? One year. One year, two, two, two years. years I think. Just, yeah. Forty dollars. Yeah, we always get years. it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know which one you wanted. I yeah. It's a little bit cheaper, isn't it? The two years. Yeah. yeah. That, or is that? No. No, that's okay. fine. Uh, local com computer store for nine hundred and forty-eight dollars, and blue tarp, which is Zobishan, for twenty dollars. So I will sign those later. Okay, we are to Dale. Um, Silver Lake land appraisal is done. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have to pay for it. Whether it's and we have to pay for it, and of course, if they decide two years from now to buy that same piece of land, we'll probably have to do it again. It, it, it wasn't a tremendous cost, but I think it was. Uh, you know, I think it was. Everybody did it for the right reasons at that particular point. I don't have a copy of it yet. Charlie's going to forward me a copy, so we should um, we should know about the, that. So you don't know what it appraised at? No. Okay. No, I don't. I would assume more um, real estate is beginning to really roll now on a lot of levels. Um, sales, I mean, I'm getting calls from people I haven't heard from in 10 years. Hey, can you do this? Because I used to be in that business. You okay. Know, appraisal work. Say, no, I can't, but you know, here's somebody who can. Um, so well, when I get that, again, I will forward. Uh, I hope he sends me a copy electronically. If not, I will just send you the abstract of it. And Good. Thank you. Have a copy there. Email server, still on. It'll be part of the grant, and we'll see how that goes forward. Oh, so we're not, yeah, you know, we had already been working on this. We it's had, but uh, I think we've gone to uh, a 50 server license yeah. with the idea of being able to put all boards and commissions chairpersons on there. Okay. Okay. But if we don't get the grant, we still have to face, yeah. right. I think, doing that. Yeah. yeah. Which will, and again, I think that probably something that, doesn't really come under capital, so we'll have to deal with that when it happens. Um, sale of the surplus town car, the ad will go out this Friday. And um, it was in last week, yeah. Was it in it last was, week? It was yeah. in Oh, okay. She got yeah. it in early then. So, all right. We got it in early, and um, nobody's I, called. I think the deadline is the 10th. You haven't gotten it. Nobody's dropped off yeah. any bid envelopes yet. So. Is it a sealed bid? <laughs> I mean, it's not. <laughs> so, what do we do with it if it doesn't, if we don't? Get anyone who wants to spend five hundred dollars. I mean, if that's the case, car. then I suppose we call somebody who hauls cars away and say, "Well, you know, take it away." But I had a car that rusted up, so I drove it down to. There's a place in Middleborough where they weigh it and they pay you the scrap mm -hmm. iron. So, 
Yeah, we may have to do something yeah, like that. Right. Okay. Although the, yeah. chief, the chief is the chief Basari is the contact person for that, and he did say somebody had inquired about where to drop okay. off the bid. So I assume we'll probably get yeah. a, Good. get a bid Good. on it um, soon, and you know then you can vote to sell it. And that. Dave, I'm sorry. What was the deadline for that? The tenth. Um, what's today? Yeah, the tenth. Yeah, it's today's the sixth. Tenth. I'm sorry, it was in last week. You're right. Is that the only surplus vehicle that we have? That's the only one that's come to my knowledge okay. so far that we that we okay. uh, that we Good. have. Uh, you know the uh, yeah we have. Uh, I mean, occasionally they most of the vehicles, like in the police department, are traded in. This mm -hmm. one they didn't trade in. The last one they didn't trade in, but but most of them are just rolled over and traded in. And the components, police components. Overhead, what they call a name for them, overhead lights and so on and so forth, are um, and radios and stuff are all transferred from one vehicle to another. So, I mean, we don't buy all of that stuff new again. Chief takes care of that. Um, beyond that, there's nothing that old in the highway department that, that I'm aware mm -hmm. of um, or in the fire department. Um, I was suppose in a few years or a year, the second ambulance, which is now God, I don't know how old, the, well, actually the first ambulance, I don't know how old it is, that would be a surplus vehicle and that would be sold at surplus and then the um, um, new ambulance would replace the one we currently have and that would become the, the number two because you can't really only have one, they break, they need, they have to go for certifications, they need, so they have to have, you know, they have to be able to run um, two of them at the same, or manage two of them at the same time. And that's it for me at this point. Okay, one question that I, I thought of this afternoon is um, you were going to look into the Elizabeth Dennett gift for the Historic Society? Yeah, I did. And did you it's get not as easy as it looks. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I know you had trouble when you, you yeah. went to find it, but you were going to, I think the last time we talked, you were going to. I'm trying to get the to information. I, somebody must have some information to tell me because it. it, it she, I guess she left money to the library, which I know about, mm -hmm. and to the Historical Society, which I wasn't aware Talk of. Talk to uh, Chris Moreno. Yeah, but the, normally that's done through a will, through a probate, and um, she doesn't have a probate. Right. Not in so account. when we're done, let me give you Terry Patterson's information. Um, Terry Patterson was Honey Patterson's husband. Honey Patterson was Elizabeth Dennett's niece who lived in town. Okay. Somebody had to administer that. And, and he will direct you, I'm and sure. When we were here, she, she had bank books with the money, right? I mean, she had bank books that she was showing you with the money. Now... We had a statement. Yeah, a all statement. we've got is a statement. Statement, okay. So if, there, if, um, if that's a trust with the bank, then the bank would have those, that information. I just don't know what bank it is. I think, Bree, don't you have those documents? I have just the copy the of statements? the statements. Okay, but so, yeah, it would indicate what, what bank it's what from. bank it is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Could you just yeah make a copy of that and give it to me, and I can inquire that way because it was obviously done out of probate um, for whatever reason, because she's only recently deceased, and um, and if there were any special instructions that go with that, it would be the bank mm -hmm. would be in charge of that. When but I talked to Chris, she didn't. Yeah, Chris doesn't have anything. Think that there was anything, and that it was. Strictly for repairs. Well, well, if there are no qualifications for how they can use the money, then that's fine. But we need to know that. This was supposed to be for bills or mm -hmm. like that or payroll. A lot of times in those trusts, you know, you can only spend the interest. You can't spend the principal. And there's a whole lot of qualifications. But if, just give me that, and I'll peruse the bank and find out if there's any. At least if the bank knows anything okay. about it. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, so now we're at. Correspondence, unless you have something else that you yeah, want to. Um, Dale and I attended a meeting with uh, the Carver mm -hmm. people. Um, Mike Mim Mankowski. Milanowski. Milanowski. Thanks, sorry. Frank. Town manager and uh, Alan Dunham, board of selectmen. And we just talked through uh, the impetus, impetus for this was uh, what could we do as towns sharing? I think uh, it was, well, we spent, what, two or three hours? Yeah, and, uh, three anyway. Yeah. It was a good discussion, uh, wide-ranging. I certainly learned a lot. Um, one of the things that uh, Michael has is a, uh, a 
a forecasting tool and a capital planning tool. They do 10-year capital planning. Mm -hmm. And he was kind enough to share that. So it was on an Excel spreadsheet. I'll circulate it. Um, and then Barbara will take a crack at it and I'll probably help. We agreed we'd have a follow-up meeting. Uh, the idea being just one select person so that it's mm -hmm. not a meeting, you know, a breakfast yep. meeting. Uh, it'd be Dale and Michael again, and one of you, and uh, they were talking about having the chairman of their selectmen. So they want a different select person than you? Yes. And then oh. after that, we'll Did have they specify they yeah. wanted a different one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it. And then after that, we'd probably do another meeting, and the other one would go. They have five members, though. Who yes. would like breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, because I am going off, I would suggest that, that you do this. Okay. If you can. Can you do a breakfast? I think meeting? it's worthwhile, and uh, we can chat about, you know, I mean, it was, I mean, there I was no agenda. I could do it Saturday, agenda. but I can't do it during the week. Yeah. You know how hard it is to get bureaucrats to work on a Saturday. I know. Well, you know how hard it is to get them to work Monday through Friday. <laughs> Moving on. This is Terry Yeah, I, I would be more than willing to do that. I'm sure we can come up with something. So yeah. Dale will over. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could even meet, you know, at five or you know, five thirty, something like that. I can come right from work or whatever yeah, is that's convenient for them. I'll, I'll check with them and okay. yeah. see what happens. And, you know, okay. Like we met at Percy's in Kingston, but there's no reason you couldn't do it in Cabo, right? Right. There. Yeah. I'll bring uh, coffee. Tell them I'll do that. Yeah. They Could they come to Plymouth the and take you off, out for lunch? Yeah, you could, yeah, you could come to Plymouth, take me out for lunch. Can you go we, for a three-hour lunch? No. <laughs> <laughs> Talk fast. Correspondence. Um, this is a note from Bill Hayes, the uh, Plimpton Tree Warden relative to Eversource profiling trees for potential removal. I'll just read this. Mr. Alex Roach, an arborist working with Eversource, is working in town profiling trees for potential removal. These are the trees with the blue ribbons you see around town. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roach is working under the direction of Eversource distribution arborist Kyle, Kyle Barry. The trees are being evaluated for removal based on significant mechanical defects, decay, directly under electric wires, etc. Property owners or abutters will be notified by the arborist of the potential tree removals. Eversource receives written permission for private property trees. Once trees have been secured, they will be painted with a blue dot. Bill goes on to say, I will review any town trees with the arborist to make sure a determination of the tree's conditions. The utility is working with the town on many large hazardous trees. Uh, so the, separately, I at the same time had written him a note because I've got a tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, it wasn't, I thought they might be for pruning, and he said, no, these are, this is for actual removal, okay. However, the private property or the abutter will be contacted prior to any removal, so you'll have an opportunity to do that. I was actually contacted, I think, roughly two months ago. Were you? Yeah. And, and they actually wrote down the wrong address for the tree. They, they put it on the corner of Center and Main, so it would have been the only tree in the front of the house. So I called them trying to figure out what that was, and they had actually written down the wrong address. So okay. if, if you get such a letter, you know, just check on the address and make sure that you're happy with what they're doing. And yeah, and get push back, back if uh, you're not. Yeah. I'm certainly, the tree they're talking about, I want to make sure that, in fact, it's diseased. If it mm -hmm. isn't diseased, I don't want it coming down. And uh, I think it was about a year or two ago they were trimming trees and taking down ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing. And I called, sent a note, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they just bypassed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, it's, this is it's not, not something written that... written in concrete, no. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Halifax Express. This is uh, Friday, March 3rd. Most of the information in here was all Halifax. Uh, except for send Plimpton excise payments directly to Treasurer Collector. Do not use the uh, enclosed envelope. I think we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. A 
all the pictures are Halifax. The only other thing is the uh, Town of Plimpton uh, surplus vehicle auction. So this is in there under planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> what year is it? 2005 Ford Crown Victoria, four-door black, mileage 168,000, V8 engine, minimum bid $500. Okay. The beginning says it's for a parts-only vehicle yeah. because it has no intake manifold issues. Known issues, intake manifold, and ABS service light is on. And that's pretty much it. All right. Colleen, a while back, we, I think, had gotten an email about the fence viewer. Do you remember yes. this? Whatever happened with that? <laughs> the, um, I, I think the person who instigated that thought that the neighbors would get together, have a cup of coffee, and get it settled. Um, that didn't happen that way. Lawyers got involved. The fence is <coughs> over. It's, it's okay, all so over it's now. done. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and we did appoint Bob Carling as the fence viewer. Fence okay, viewer, perfect. No, it's kind of uh, moved. One other thing is the bylaw committee. Yeah. I want to just update there. Um, we had a meeting last week, mm -hmm. and um, two people from the Department of Revenue came. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mary McKinnon, who actually lives in Kingston and is, is chairperson of the Finance Committee in Kingston, and Melinda Brody, I think her name was, a uh, senior project manager, shared with us uh, what they've seen with other towns, and it was very, uh, very informative. I think it. Yeah, their, their um, background obviously is more in the finance right. bit, but they had some good resources for, mm. for following up and yeah. good information for the committee. Very nice. So, and you know, really, this their involvement it was all started with us doing that DOR review. Really? Okay. Um, was that three years ago now? Yeah, I think yeah. three years yeah. ago. And Melinda so. Brody was actually the person who worked on it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, very yeah. neat. Yeah, so it was good. So, so from that that thing, we did the Collins Center, and we did. You yeah, know, we've addressed most of the issues in that review. Yeah. 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 Very nice. And, yeah. One other. Uh, to go back into articles and, and possible bylaws, does and you don't have to answer this, but I mean, just for food for thought, do you, does the board want to consider a moratorium on the commercial sale of marijuana products in town until the state until the state settles what they're going to do? Because at this point, um, no one knows, and and so some towns are running into the you know people are running in with these big applications and they're doing the things and there's no there's no state guidance yet on that so you can kind of put them off on that but you know sometimes it's a lot cleaner if you have a moratorium on it we did the moratorium for one year on medical marijuana um, I mean the other parts of the law you can't um, that's the law I and mean, you can't change those but I mean, just in terms of the the retail sale and so on and so forth like that because. We may want to, you know, you may want to, uh, the town may want to institute, you know, zones, certain zones, certain areas or whatever, which you may be able to do based on however the legislature comes up with this law, which is supposed to come out sometime this year. Now, again, it's food, just food for thought. You don't yeah, I think we should discuss it. We might want to run it by the bylaw committee, too. I'd be interested in some input. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some towns are doing it, bigger towns than us, but I mean, because mm -hmm. they're, they're going to have, um, I mean, then there's one up town, um, up my way where I live, where they're, they're kicking down the townhouse door to get in with all of these programs, and it's like, wait a second, we can't do it yet, and so you have, and they say, well, in, 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 in lieu of the fact that there is no guidance on it, we want to do it anyway, and... You know, you, you end up in that thing where you, you set a precedent and you're grandfathering something in that may not be even legal when, well, whenever the legislature. I think, as you law. said, we did it with the medical, and it probably makes sense to do it. Mm -hmm. I think Just so too. So we don't. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll check on some articles and, and, and email some articles out, and you can discuss it. Okay. I hate to get ahead of the state. You know, yeah, it's just going to exactly. raise well, issues. Yeah, and but you don't want to do it too early where you've wasted the year where, you know, things aren't really happening. Because I think you can only do this once, and it's, what, for one year? 
the moratorium. Where, the moratorium yeah. where, you know, maybe it would be better to do the moratorium next year rather than this year if they're still working things out. Mm. I don't know. Well, I mean, I just don't to, know. The, the, original, the original plan, the original timeline was that they were going to hold off until sometime this year, 2018. They said they would have, you know, they would have the law fine-tuned in 2018. Fine-tuned as Beacon Hill does with things, so that's the way, that's where it stands at this point. Um, whether they push it off again, could you just sort of check with whoever is in the state house just to see, you know, what the latest thinking is? Yeah, yeah okay. maybe an email to that would probably Betty be a question yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely, ask her tomorrow. Absolutely. Question tomorrow for Tom Calder. Yeah, I'm that's sure perfect. they're well aware of what's going. I'm sure on. they're well yeah. aware too. And and um, and and decide whether you know whether we need to go from there or not. Yes. Um, because again, it's just completely uncharted territory. No right. one really knows how to deal with this thing one way or the other, and um, and there, there's going to be a lot of growing pains through this through this whole process. Right. So mm -hmm. if you can protect the town early on, it probably sure. be better, better to do it than absolutely. Let them. What is um, what's going to happen with the wage and personnel bylaws? Are they going to stay under the jurisdiction of wage and personnel? Was there something that we needed to do as a warrant article to change that? I can't remember. We, we got an email in, from The question Tara. was whether to include the wage and personnel bylaw in the general bylaws of the town. Because it's yeah. a separate, it's not included in the right, book at this right. particular point. The people who were from the Department of Revenue suggested that was the way to go. Okay. And also special acts. To keep it separate or include it? Include it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tyrone no, I would, I would think we probably want to consider an article to include it in the bylaw. Fairly simple. Okay. Uh, fairly simple, uh, you know, article to just include it in the bylaw so it gets published along with the, with the, uh, with the general bylaws. And then, uh, you know. So who would do that? Can you do that? Uh, yeah, I'll work with the town clerk on yeah. it and just yeah. see how she wants to. And special how she, acts. How she wants to put it in there. Right, write the language yeah. so that yeah. we can get the special yeah. acts in there too. That Tara wanted in too. I don't remember what it was, but certainly she'll tell you. There was a third thing that Tara had mentioned. Yeah, okay. I can okay. I don't recall what it was. And that will keep all of the bylaw updates in one. Everybody oh, it just makes you. so much more yeah. sense, and having the special acts in there will be oh, yeah. so yeah. nice. Well, the special acts just basically list the you know when the town votes to accept a certain right that all needs to be compiled and put in there, and and then you don't have to include you could, but you don't have to include what the the verbiage out of the general law that you just just the just chapter, the topic. just the chapter. Right. Well, and the then topic. you've got a section. reference to know that we that actually did it. it. Yeah, that the town is accepted. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Anything else then? Um, I do have an update. Caitlin Cole with the dog Ruby. Yes. She got her license. Yay. Yeah, the dog good. That's good. 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 Okay. Very good. good. That's great news. And then we have yeah. Townhouse Security. Okay. You're on then. Thanks. Um, Whitman Communications came today, or over the season last week, and the chief came today and delivered everybody their new. Panic button. So every department, every, every office, office has, has one. It is not on a clipboard like this. There are two offices that will have this. This meeting room and the small meeting room. This will be on the wall. It is on this clipboard. It's not to be removed. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a, an issue and you feel that you have to use it, just hold the button down five seconds. Someone will come. If you feel as though you want to call 911, the chief has suggested you can do that also. But there will be two clipboards, one in this office, one in this meeting room, one in the small meeting room. Chris is going to make arrangements because they're going to use that room for counts on aging. Mm -hmm. They'll be on the board mm -hmm. and all of the other offices have one. They are numbered. They are assigned to offices. Right now there is still one in the hallway. Mm -hmm that can be used and people know where that is because I've sent an email out. Okay. Okay. Our old system will be moved to the library eventually. Good. They're going to provide us with a fee on doing that. It's, I mean, all the equipment's there. It's just a matter of moving it. And okay. So right now, but this will be on the wall. Good. But they are not to be removed from offices. Okay. Okay. So okay. And don't push them to play and see if someone will come. 
Someone will come. So since they're numbered, will they know exactly where the incident is? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yes. So they'll go right where they need to be. Right yeah, in perfect. the panel at dispatch, when you press a button, they know exactly what office it comes from. Perfect. Okay. Terrific. Hopefully you don't have to use them. Hopefully you don't, but it's okay. nice to have it. And then since we're on the topic of townhouse security, let's just remind people again, if you have been given a key to the front door, Make sure you lock it behind you when you're the only person in the townhouse. And please bring and your keys with you. And bring your keys with you because it uh, happened last week that do, the do door the was left unlocked again. Key? They do have a key. There is a but key. But yeah. they have it in a lockbox and they have to get it from the chief. And, uh, oh, no. You, you, they don't chief. carry them? Police can access this building from their office at this point. I mean, I think the new fire has to use the lock box. Fire department has the lock box on the outside. Okay. They yeah. have a lock box on the outside of all of our buildings now yeah. in case right. they have to right. enter. Okay. But uh, the no, I'm just thinking if somebody forgot their key for some reason, which I believe is what happened, could you call the police and just say, hey, can you swing by and make sure the door's locked for us? It's yeah. not ideal. If they have a key, they should remember to bring right, it. Right, but it has. The sergeant doesn't have access to that key, so they had to call the chief. The chief had to then tell him what brought the key. It, so the chief came oh, to the door and brought it. That's why. Yeah. And, and you then can't because. You this door from the inside. Right, you got to lock it from the outside. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we. Can't we get that? So that would I be the other alternative, it. just so it locks after you. So you could just yeah. try to remember your key because it's not an easy process. And okay. then the lights were left on and oh you know, boy. You know, we have a big electric bill, so we all need to be cognizant. Make of it that. bigger. We're about to adjourn. Do you have <laughs> uh, just quickly um, there is a, a, a grant open that we can apply for and in conjunction with Kingston. Uh, I haven't had the response yet from the Kingston town planner, but she did um, confirm that... This we, is for the flyover? Um, this isn't for the flyover because that's in conjunction with the other towns, mm -hmm. um, but this would be um, anything else associated with that product. It, um, it's the Community Compact IT grant, and they just opened it up again. Um, and we're filing under that. Right. So how would this work? Okay. So you have extra credit, you know, I mean, extra, um, if you go within, we'll go with another town, and you're probably, are you going with another town for some type of software? No, we weren't. Okay. Um, if this is in conjunction with the flyover, and it might include the flyover, but I haven't spoken to the town planner yet. Okay. So they're putting in a grant. And so if the two of us, because the other towns already went in together for the February 1st deadline. So this is an extension of it, and I just found this out today, and I was waiting for the response. But when I spoke with um, Pat Dillon, he would like to use the software too. There have been some incidents that when I, he came in and I showed him just what pictometry does, he said he could really use that. And we could no longer use the vision GIS, we could go with this people GIS mm -hmm. that all the other towns are going with. And it's web-based, so Pat could use it, the police department could use it. So if Kingston, are they going to submit for us? Is that the way? Well, we would go in, their planner is going to submit, so we would go in with them. on Because we're doing the same, they're doing people GIS and the flyover. So that's what I have to speak with her tomorrow to see, you know, exactly what she's doing. But, you know, been making other calls, and everybody else was already locked into the, mm -hmm. the February 1st deadline. So this is the deadline that I just found um, on Thursday and, and started talking and today went further with it with her and I contacted People GIS and asked him for a proposal. He's been giving them to all the mm -hmm. towns. So it might be that it doesn't cost us anything, but I would know shortly. Okay, um, I just want to make sure that... The money's coming out of two different years though. Right, this grant right. is, is for after July 1st. Okay. And the flyover is going to be done March and April this year. Okay. So well, the grant you're applying for is for next year. Right. So I we just don't, don't want two conflicting yeah, applications. I, right. So I want to make sure we don't drop. It said you can have more than one per community in, in the, all the language. It said that a community can apply for different types. For, they can apply for more than one. But we'd be piggybacking with another town, okay. and that's given a little bit um, well, higher. I'm fine if... Kingston's filling it out for Kingston and Plimpton. That would right. be great. 
Yeah, because they're already, um, apparently the planner's already working on it. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, uh, my I just hate to find out after that we should have filled out something and we didn't do it and yeah. it drops off. Well, that's why I'm waiting for her yeah. to call me okay, back. Great. Perfect. Yeah. It's out today. So let so. me know, Deb, because um, okay. I'm also working on the technology grant for the townhouse. And okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And just but where it, it would Sounds great. wrap up the, the flyover, too. And then, you know, the other um, departments could use it online at night where right now it resides in my, you know, my mm -hmm. system. Yeah. Um, so I think this would be. Um, so they could use it anytime. Right. Since it's up on the web. Yeah. You know the boards that you know, um, con right. con planning. Sure. Everybody mm -hmm. could use it. Yeah. At night. Makes okay. a lot of sense. Well, especially if it's Good. paid for with a grant. Is this yeah. for GIS as well? I mean, is this so? Yeah. It, we end up with one of those fancy GIS pages on 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 the internet. Okay. Yeah, um, vision. We have vision GIS on the internet, and they haven't upgraded that in 15 years. Yeah. So it's okay. and we we're forced to do many. Um, Wendy is an or and I help her um, a butters list by hand now, and this would help us. So okay, Great. interesting. Are there any ongoing costs? You know, and ma maintenance costs. That's what I'm waiting to hear. From okay. Tomorrow. Okay. You Perfect. Know, I, I just jumped on board when I, you know, received city and town, and it said that it's open. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm like, okay, let let's do yeah. this. It has to be filed by April first. Yeah. 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 So it closes uh, April first. Right. So I'll I'll wait, and the planner was already, you know, moving forward. Great. So it Good. worked out nicely that we could jump on board. Yeah, very Good. nice. Who's Thanks. The person, the planner. The town planner. Um, Okay. Well, yeah. I, I haven't spoken with her yet, so that's when it resonates. Can hire a son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here's okay. she's very good. good. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. In, in yeah. terms of certified a butters list, those things save an amazing amount of time. You you uh, you know, you basically you highlight the parcel you need in a butters list for it puts in the five hundred foot perimeter around wow. it, flags every adjacent yeah. parcel and prints out the labels for you. Oh, nice. Other than that it's it, again it's one of those technological things that ends up saving you money and personnel down the road. Well an accuracy yeah. <laughs> I watched uh, something similar to that then design a car. <laughs> it's amazing, you know the the computer just creates it Makes the wind tunnel. I mean, it's it's wow, interesting. It's in fact, wild. I was in a store somewhere in Plymouth. I don't know. Maybe it was Best Buy, but they had you could make your own um, plastic injection. You know how the um, 3D the printing. printing, 3D yeah. printing, and they had you could pick the things you wanted, and it would just make it right there for you. Wow. 3D printing will be in everybody's house, similar exactly. to a microwave oven, very yeah. soon. I mean, <laughs> that's just. And in 10 years, you won't drive a car. That's bank. what they say. Hmm. You won't drive a car. Yeah. It won't be able to drive anyway. itself. I'm okay with that. Me too. I, I wish it had happened for the last six years. I've been all doing the commute. I could have slept <laughs> all the way. I could have slept all the way down here. Uh, okay, you know, when you so think about it, all sorts of things are going to drop out. The trucking industry is going to be disseminated with uh, jobs. Just blown away. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start, the ramifications of this are. It, it, it is truly mind-boggling. Again, they have it in the library, the book. Yeah. Uh, they'll have the tape. They'll have the disc. <laughs> when I'm done with mine, I'm going to donate mine to the library, but it's fascinating. Read it. You'll, you, you'd you really appreciate it, I mean, because with a techno back, with a technological background. Hmm. I am okay. driving my car. We do have a couple of other little things to, to finish up. Um, it, it does turn out that the zoning enforcement officer's contract was also up. Okay. So we need to work on that. So we'll Maybe see if we can get that on next week as well. Absolutely. Um, we got our first payment from Rocky Harvest, the $13,500. Um, I guess we need to figure out what account it goes into. I'm sorry. Yeah, Barbara will we figure it out. Well, this came from Barbara. Is she asking that? We had given it to... You had given it down to the building department the because building department. originally it was... It was tied to an inspection fee. Now it's not tied to an inspection, so... Um, Probably ought to go into legal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where... Do you have a suggestion for her to do with this? Can I just give it to her and she's going to... I'll talk to Barbara. Think, yeah, John okay. can talk to Barbara. I write on those on where... Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but they could just go to the I mean, we were line. supposed to get checks in the original contract, so there must be something somewhere back then. Well, that's that's the difference, is because back then it was attached to an inspection. It was inspection fee. This is no longer attached okay. to that. Um, the, the check was taken down to Bob Carling, and she, that's what she had recommended. She said, oh, this will come through. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and he was well, talking to so. town council about something else and mentioned that to her. She wanted to see a copy of it to make sure that it was the right amount and timing was right and all that. And uh, it's possible that she would have some recommendation on how we do this as well. So, so let me take a shot at that. So let well, me give there that should to be that. one more check coming, too, yeah. hmm? for, for the 20000 20, And I did... Actually, when he told me that, I followed up with town council asking about the timing on that. That's they have 20 days from March 1st. Some day, no, it was from I don't know if it's when we signed the settlement agreement, when the court got the settlement agreement, okay. or what. So it's soon. It's it's soon, Very but soon. I'm not sure when. So I did okay. ask her about that. Okay, um, we'll have that information. Yes, good. All right, we do have some minutes. Um, we have an executive session minutes from last week that um, I think are fine. So motion to approve the executive session minutes from February 27th as written. Second. I wrote All in favor. I'll well, abstain because I wasn't here. So Aye. two in favor and one abstention. All right. We've got minutes from... I don't know the date on these. I think the dog hearing came first. So did you all get a chance to look mm -hmm. at the, the, the... There was a question about whether or not we actually remembered to close the hearing. I don't remember these I things. don't think we did, and I wouldn't... It was the intent to close the hearing. I don't think it's going to have any impact on anything. Do we want to add a sentence that, you know... No vote was taken? Or what? No, we did vote. Yeah, we voted that the to intent was to close the hearing, and um, sorry, we forgot. Yeah, it was a procedural error. The adjournments de facto closing of the hearing. All right, so then, right. That sounds good. Yeah. Cool. So then, motion to accept the um, the dog hearing minutes as amended. No, we, we're not amending anything. anything. Okay. Okay. We're just good. Second. written. Pardon? I printed these off on my Mac, and it prints weirdness. It's yeah, 213. Yeah. It, it prints. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Minutes that Dale prepared for February 16th, and I actually do have some questions about this. Um, the first is under Rocky Harvest, you have two motions to authorize time with town council and I don't actually remember what that was about. I, I assume I did it, but I don't remember it. Oh, this was the 16th to authorize time with town council. I'm not sure it was had to do with Rocky Harvest. Yeah, I that's just put it in there because I, I have it. In my, I had it in my notes that there was a motion for time with town council and I, of course I failed to put down a Yeah, subject. and I, I started looking at the um, what re else recording of it and night? I couldn't. It. Um, we we signed the Carver Urban Renewal Conflict of Interest letter for KP. I just don't know what else you would have needed to contact council about. No, and I looked through my notes and I couldn't find hmm. it. So I, we can leave it or, or take it out. I don't think it matters really. But well, it was on cable, right? I didn't. I didn't watch the whole thing. I yeah. I ran out of time. So so basically. Move yeah. Rocky Harvest down to where I read the mm -hmm. press release. Okay. This is related to the um, Carver Urban Renewal Project. So motion to accept the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. You, you now, um, these are executive session, right? No. no. Okay, those are regular session. Rocky. Okay. The only executive session was the one we just did. Can we there. release those? For those. the Rocky Harvest things? No, the executive session minutes that you just approved, can we release those or no? Mm. Mm. Well, that was about the uh, contractual. Let's wait until we, know, we yeah, finish probably with not these, then. these current contracts. Okay. okay, so then we have minutes from February 27th, which we prepared. Um, 
I did have a couple amendments in the first paragraph. Um, sorry, it took me a minute here to find it. So, in the past, in other, I'd like to add, in other regional school districts, um, land owned by regional school districts, um, required the vote of um, the legally elected school committee. And then the sentence goes on to say, Senator Brad Brady fired, excuse me, filed new legislation for future votes of town, towns, elected officials be required for the, I just think that's all kind of rough to read. So I'd like it rewritten to say, Senator Brady has filed new legislation which would require votes by elected town officials, parentheses, board of selectmen, of district member towns for the sale of land owned by regional school districts. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Okay, so just one rewrite. When did he file that? When he was here last week, he said it's been filed. Good. Um, it doesn't have a bill number or okay. anything like that yet. And on the second page, it says a draft of the description of the town administrator position was received and will be reviewed by the Collins Group. Is that... I, I don't quite remember that this is going to be reviewed by the Collins group. No, I don't think so. What did the Collins group give you one? No, we uh, we made one from uh, looking at other towns. Yeah, I think that what this may be, we talked about hiring the Collins group to yes as to go forward with the process. So I don't know how you want to. You you were not there, or mm -hmm. we were there. Do you want to think of how to rewrite that, or just take it out right now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me bring it back. Okay, so we won't vote on this one tonight. I'll bring it back. Okay. All right. That's so we're not taking we, we won't vote on that tonight. So the next meeting is next week, the 13th. We will have executive sessions prior to our meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we have actually three different contracts, at least, I think, to discuss. So we may start at 630 for open session that instead of good. six. That, that makes sense. Uh, public safety building is this week. The Silver Lake School Committee meeting is also this week, but it's kind Academic. of moot since we're not. Um, so and you want your 3.13 meeting? So you can put a second to start at 6.30? Open session. The open session will start at 6.30, yes. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and that was something about the public safety building meeting this past week. We had, um, I guess, a, maybe a little confusion, a little breakdown of communication, and that meeting started at 7, and perhaps um, Area 58 showed up at 6, so okay. it, it didn't get recorded. Um, so then motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good night. Thank you all for watching. Aye.